thank you for joining me on another episode of She Leads Now podcast, where we help career and entrepreneurial women gain the tools to develop a success mindset, create winning strategies, build collaborative relationships, and take bold action towards creating impact and fulfillment in their lives and careers. I'm your host, Sabine Gideon, and I'm on a mission to awaken and activate women and emerging leaders so they can tap into their innate leadership ability, elevate their influence, and create the impact they were destined to make. If you're ready to up-level your confidence, courage, and influence, you've come to the right place. Join me weekly for insights, strategies, and resources to help you grow, develop, and embody the leader you were meant to be so that you can make the impact you know you are called to make and establish the legacy you've always dreamed. The world eagerly awaits the emergence of your brilliance, impact, and influence. So with that, let's dive into this week's episode. Hello, and welcome to another episode of She Leads Now. I'm your host, Sabine Gideon, and I am excited to be back with you for another episode uh, focused on our series around networking, building strategic partnerships, uh, collaborations, and building our social capital. So if you are tuning in for the very first time, welcome. I'm happy to have you here and hope you gain a little bit of wisdom around building your network in this in this particular episode. And then, of course, if you are a returning listener, thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate you being here and just know that you're going to get some nuggets out of this as well. So today is building on a the series that I started around, you know, building strategic partnerships and, and relationships. So as I shared in last week's episode, if you haven't had a chance to listen to that, I suggest that you go back to it. You don't have to stop right now, but at some point, go ahead and, and go back and listen to it. You know, while we are at the beginning of the year, and I know that many of you have already uh, identified your goals for the year, things that you want to do, things that you want to accomplish, impact that you want to make, you know, my challenge and my invitation to you from last week was to really take a step back and identify who in your network that you could begin to lean on or reach out to or connect with and reconnect with to help support you in meeting those goals. Um, you know, many of you I know are, are type A, very ambitious, very driven women. And for a very long time, you have probably been really, really successful in figuring out how to get stuff done and doing it on your own. What I'd love to see, especially since in the last couple of years, so many of us have stepped up and said, you know, we want to play a bigger game and we're tired of playing small and we want to make a bigger impact and we want to set example for the next generation. In order for us to amplify our impact, in order for us to accelerate our growth, we can't do that using the same tools, using the same mindset, using the same energy that we have in the past. You know, in order for you to do more, it's going to require more of you. And there's only so much energy that we can expend. There's only so much time in the day. And so my invitation for those of you who are looking to broaden your impact, broaden your influence, is that you start to look at who, not how, meaning that you start to look at building your social capital as part of the work that you're doing, as part of your ability to amplify your impact and accelerate your growth. So that's what the series is really going to be focused on. How do you do that? What are the tools? What are the resources? Last week, I gave you a little bit of foundational stuff. Today, I want to talk about really, you know, how we as women can begin to uh, embody and maybe even embrace networking in a way that we previously hadn't, mostly because for the most part, uh, most women I know, when we were taught to network, we were taught to network like the the men network. And for many of us, me included, as outgoing as I am, it never really felt authentic. It never really felt true to me. It felt like I was I was coming on, right? Like uh, spotlight is on, and now I I play the game, so to speak. As time has gone on, I realized that I really do enjoy connecting with people, building relationships, um, building strategic partnerships. However, I don't want to do it in a very transactional way that is not authentic to me at all. And I suspect many of you who are listening and women in general 
The reason why networking, traditional networking has never sat well is because it felt very transactional. And so when you think about the differences between men and women, men, you know, from a very early age, they they are conditioned to build relationships. They are conditioned. They learn that, you know, part of being successful, part of uh, having access is to build relationships with the right people. There's a Harvard professor, Francesca Gino, who led a study about how networking, you know, impacts professionals, impacts uh, people of color, and certainly impacts individuals who at the lower levels within their organizations. And uh, the study found that, you know, people likened networking to this very, very icky feeling. And so she coined it the Macbeth effect. So if you think about Lady Macbeth, who's in the bathroom washing all the blood over her hand on her hands because she just felt, you know, so icky, if you will. Um, and many of us, because of the transactional, because of maybe the one sided, because of the gen- disingenuous uh, feelings that we perceived around networking in the past, especially before the pandemic, you know, we we felt like, oh, my gosh, if I have to go to a networking event and give my 30 or 60 second elevator speech and all of this stuff, right? Like, I don't that doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel natural. So today, encouraging you to lean in on what's natural to you, because in order for us to be successful in anything, we have to believe that that thing that we're doing is for our good. Otherwise, we're going to sabotage it or we're going to abandon it or it's just not going to produce the results that we want to. If we've learned anything in these last few years, it's that relationships matter. They really do. And for the longest time, you know, especially when it comes to business, uh, relationships are about business. You don't do business with a profile. You don't do business with an email. You don't do business with a phone number. You do business with people. And that matters for you, whether you're in a traditional organization or you're in your own business. And so, you know, the language of business is the language of people, period. So how can we leverage our natural innate abilities to build relationships, to nurture relationships with others to our advantage and in support of us reaching our goals amplifying our impact, accelerating our growth. That's what I want to focus on today. And so when you think about, um, when you think about it from the perspective of our male counterparts, like I mentioned before, there was a study that was done uh, with regards to, um, actually it was a book, Why Him, Why Her? Um, And I'll get the link and include it in the, um, in the show notes as well. But the point of the book was really talking about how you know, men approach networking differently. Like it's, it's in transactional, but it's still authentic to them. Um, because again, at an early age, they are socialized to build these relationships, build these friendships. And then naturally as a result of the friendships, they were able to, you know, expand in business. They were able to get opportunities We as women, that's not what we're taught. Matter of fact, we're just not taught, period, (laughs) what it means to network. We just looked at our male counterparts and said, oh, that's networking. Let me try it. I don't like that. Right. Versus where, you know, they that was that's part of their upbringing. That's part of their belief system. We as women, we start to learn, oh, okay, that's how they get ahead or that's how they grow their business. Let me try it. And for many of us, you know, we, we fumble (laughs) or we flounder and we're trying to figure out what works for me, what works for me. Um, Some of you, you know, you're, you're like me where you're outgoing, but at the same time, you like your, your, your personal space. So you may be considered what's an ambivert where you can turn on, but you also need that time to turn off. So you may thrive in environments where it's in person, you're connecting with people, you're building relationships, you know, there's no agenda. And then as, as time goes on, if, if there's a mutually beneficial opportunity, then you move forward with that. Others who are a little bit more introverted, they may, you know, feel like, all right, being on LinkedIn and building relationships and having conversations that might be better for them or better yet, they may feel like, you know, very, very small groups, very, very small circles in their local town, whatever the case may be, is a better fit. This is not meant to say like, this is the way, or this is the best way. 
my goal is to share with you multiple strategies and invite you to test these strategies out for yourself. If it fits, use it, (laughs) use it to your advantage. If it doesn't, then you know that's not my thing. And so I'm not going to move forward with that. But what we cannot do and what I hope that we will not do this year is continue to buy into the narrative that the way to get ahead, the way to grow, the way to expand is by putting in more hours or is by burning out or is by, you know, like at the sake of your health. That's not okay. That was never okay. That's that's not right. As someone who has recovered from burnout more times than I care to admit, you know, the the shift needs to happen. I know so many amazing women who have the desire to grow, not just for themselves. Obviously, you know, they want to win, they want to crush their goals, but they want to grow because they see growth as a pathway to them making a bigger impact, to them to creating a legacy. Um, for the generations to come. And yet they're not able to even focus on the things that they want to focus on because they just don't have the energy. They don't have the time. They don't have the knowledge. So they get stuck in these ruts around, oh, if I want to do this, I got to go back to school or I got to get a certification or I got to do this. And that's not true at all. Those are stories that we've told ourselves. If you recall, if you listened to last week's episode, I said, hey, we're at the beginning of the year. I'm assuming many of you have already created goals or intentions of what you want to create. And now that you've gotten things, you know, on on paper or, you know, on your project board, now that you've got them before you start grinding, before you start telling yourself that story that this is all on your shoulders, take a moment, step back and ask, who do you know? Who do you know? Who do you know who already has this resource? Who do you know who already has this connection? Who do you know that's already in this space? And so I just, if if you get nothing out of the series, it's, yes, I'm going to give you strategies that you can test and try, but I want to shift your mindset that you can get so much further with others than you can by trying to figure it out and doing it all alone. So many of us are sitting on gifts. We're sitting on ideas. We're sitting on projects. We're sitting on things that I don't care if it changes one person's life, right? Because we don't have the time. We don't have the capacity. We don't have the energy, or maybe we don't have the know-how. Someone does. Someone else does. And so, you know, I, I want to leave this here as kind of like the setting the the tone. I want you to examine this week, you know, what are you doing to proactively build, nurture, and cultivate your network? What are you doing? Or what do you plan to do? If you haven't been doing anything at all, what do you plan to do? Over the next few weeks, I'm going to give you strategies. I'm going to give you things that I use on a consistent basis, uh, whether it's tools, tracking, you name it. And again, I invite you, try it, test it out, see if it works for you. If it does, keep it and run with it. If it doesn't work with you for you, I always say, eat the meat, spit out the bones, let it go and say, all right, Sabine, <laughs> that's not for me. I'm completely okay with that. But this year, I want to see us win in ways that we have not won before. I want us to step up and do things that we have not done before. And I want us to be able to expand our impact in a way that still preserves our health, preserves our integrity, preserves our capacity to be creative, to be supportive, and to show up for those who we want to show up for. So with that, I also want to share that I am hosting a complete masterclass on January 18th. Uh, This next one is going to be January 18th. And it's focused on this cultivating connections. Um, You know, I, if you've heard the term, your network equals your net worth. This is where I'm going to dig into what is the mindset that you need to have going into this? What are some tools and what are some strategies that you can implement on a regular basis to help support you in building, nurturing, 
and cultivating, fully cultivating your relationships so that they can become win-win relationships when and if you need them. So the link is at sabinegideon.com forward slash masterclass. You can register. It's complimentary. There's no charge, but you do need to register. It is happening, happening live and there will be no replay. So be sure to register and attend live. Um, the link will also be in the show notes, which you can check out as well. So again, that's the cultivating connections masterclass being held on January 18th at 10 AM Pacific standard time. Then the last thing that I want to share with you, of course, as always, uh, I am inviting you all to join me in She Leads Network. Part of cultivating these networks is being able to be in the room with other powerful women who have connections, who have opportunities, and of course, for you to support you in your own development with regards to training, not just on networking, but a a myriad of things, but networking being the core of it, because I do believe that we can get farther when we work together. Enrollment for She Leads Network is open now. You can learn more about that directly at sheleadsnetwork.com. With that, I will leave you. We will be back next week with another episode on this series uh, with regards to uh, navigating networking for you and how to naturally leverage networking as a woman versus trying to model what we've seen with regards to our male counterparts. Have a great rest of the day and I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of She Leads Now. If you found today's episode helpful or got a piece of insight that you plan to implement in your business or organization, I would love to hear from you. Connect with me on LinkedIn at Sabine Gideon, that's my handle, and send me a private message or feel free to go ahead and leave a review on either Apple or Spotify. I also invite you to share this episode with anyone in your network who you think might benefit from this content. Lastly, be sure to check the show notes and the description below for links to resources, including relevant downloads, articles, and any upcoming training. Until we chat again, have a blessed and powerful week.